I just realized something I feel like I should have noticed a long time ago. Video games have to be fun. Alright, hear me out on this one. So I haven't really been enjoying video games lately. I spent most of my time studying, or watching anime, or listening to some music while I should be studying. But it's not my fault, you see? It's not my fault this bitch to relax a study goes so fucking hard. I'm sorry, back to the topic. Where were we? Ah, yes. Fun. So, because of this, whenever I had to choose a video game to play, I usually choose the one where I can have the most fun. This summer I completed Ori and the Blind Forest and it was a total blast. The gameplay was amazing and the story was really beautiful. The last game I had completed before that was the 2017's Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I ate up that whole campaign, cause as a Star Wars fan there's nothing more fun than just shooting some stormtroopers with John Williams at the background and I also lose all criteria when it comes to Star Wars content. Woohoo! Best series ever! And now I am playing Monster Hunter World with some friends of mine and we're just having so much fun going around killing big ass chunky monsters in the most epic ways as possible while we talk shit and have a laugh about it. And I mean, there's nothing better than that. Everyone wants to have fun when they're playing. Right? So, Dark Souls 2, it's a game where I didn't have fun. And because of that, I just never completed it. I have a ton of hours on it. And all those hours are just pure pain and frustration, not a single bit of fun. And I think it makes sense I didn't complete it because I didn't have fun playing it. So, with all this said, one question arises, emerges, appears, comes up, pops up, originally. Why is it I played and completed a shady part of me even though I didn't think it was fun? I learned about this game watching the 2020 Games Awards and the art style really got me into it. So one year later my friend gave it to me as a birthday gift and I was really excited to try it out. And as you may guess for the tone of this video the game didn't exactly go as well as I expected. The thing is, halfway through the game, two things started to happen. I was starting to get more and more interested in what the game was saying, but at the same time, I was starting to get more and more bored. I mean, the story was interesting and the ambience really made it immersive, but the gameplay was getting in the way. I didn't want to play anymore, I just wanted to know what was going on. At the beginning most of the puzzles were easy, so it became more of a bother doing the puzzles than actual game, and when they got hard enough, it just felt like an obstacle I had to get through to continue the story. So it's just like someone passing the movie you're watching, throwing a fucking math problem book at you and tells you to go run five laps around the block before you can continue your goddamn movie. Was it a challenge? Yes. Did I want a challenge? No! I mean, yes, well, when you play something, you want it to be challenging, but I mean, I don't know, it felt like the game and the challenge were totally disconnected. I mean, yeah, teamwork and all, that was obviously the point of the puzzle. Make me feel that teamwork is important, but it felt so disparate from the story that it was just a bother. So, To The Moon is my favorite video game like ever. It's not because I've got some amazing story with it, or because I think it's actually the best game, or because it's the game I have played the most, nope, I have only played it once, for less than 9 hours, and that playtime is only because I left the game open half a night. So, what makes it so special? I liked it, that's all, the story was amazing, the music did keep up with the story, like, really well, and I almost cried at the end. Can I say it's the best game? Hell no! Gameplay wise it's just clicking every spot on the screen, but it was really beautiful and fun. The gameplay was easy and that didn't bother me. Every time I clicked on Memento I felt I discovered something important and the sensation of discovering and interacting with someone's life and going backwards through it is magical. I mean I'm not doing it justice, I cannot put into words how much I love this game. So what made it fun? I'd say it's the experience. Specifically the experience is about exploring someone's life and discovering things, and that is amazing. So coming back to shady part of me, what is the experience like? I feel it wanted to be the experience of going through someone's psyche, but instead 
it was more like an interrupted metaphorical movie about someone's psyche. And that was bothersome. So at the end of the day, it felt like a story and some gameplay stuck together with some old glue that your parents bought for a kinder class project and has been sitting in your garage for years. Almost at the same time I was playing this game, I started playing It Takes Two with a friend, and boy was that a fucking experience. Everything was so exciting and movie-like, and I wanted to keep going for the story but that didn't mean I wanted to skip the gameplay. It integrated with the story so well, you didn't feel like it was just a story, like To The Moon was, and it didn't feel like it was just non-story driven gameplay, like Dark Souls is. It Takes Two is for me just the best example you could give of gameplay and storytelling working together. But still, if you were to ask me which game I like more, I'd still say To The Moon, even if it doesn't have such stunning gameplay, cause yeah, It Takes Two is the most fun I've had in years, and was definitely amazing, but I still like To The Moon the most, I just enjoyed it more. So what is it? I started this video saying that video games have to be fun, but my favorite video game isn't the one that has provided me the most fun. Well. Yeah, not only that, the game I have played the most is definitely Minecraft, and boy I have some fun playing that game, but you know, I sometimes play technical Minecraft, and that is boring as fuck, I must go through so much farming and grinding to do some stuff, but in the end, I do it because I enjoy building farms, or watching my survival world grow. So while I was writing this, I found my opinion was slowly changing. At the beginning, I said with some confidence that video games had to be fun. Today. So what does it mean to have fun? After chatting with some friends and watching some videos, I reached this conclusion. What makes video games something fun seems to be the reward. You do something and you get a reward for it. It's all about conditioning. When you kill and loot something, it's always accompanied by a sound. That's why Doom is so enjoyable. They know how to trick your tiny little monkey brain into <laughs> Jason goes broom and the monster goes broom and there you have it. That's what we call fun. Then. Why do I ask if fun is needed? I mean, I just said it, right? We are conditioned to want it. Yeah, but at the same time, having some relaxing time without any fun is also needed because resting from fun brings something else to the table. Reflection. There are times where you don't expect any rewards, be it just traveling somewhere, just going for some mindless mining, fishing without even wanting the loot, or working on a big project without any reason, or even just stopping to contemplate the landscape. These moments aren't fun by definition, the game doesn't expect you to do something, and won't give you a reward for this decision. These are the moments where you look upon what you've done, and what you want to do, and I dare say this is a huge aspect of a game. But the problem is, you can get by with a game that's just fun, but can you do it with a game that's just a reflection? I think you can, and while I haven't played a game that has done it successfully yet, I'm sure there must be something out there that has. Then why didn't it work with the shady part of me? That's cause there's one element that went against reflection in the game. That's right, we are going back to the gameplay. As I said, it's annoying, it gets in the way and it's obtrusive. Because we were three quarters of the time doing puzzles and the other quarter going from one puzzle to another, the game gave little to no space for reflection. The puzzles were an impediment. Being so disconnected to the story just made them feel, again, like an obstacle for you to enjoy the main attractive of this game. So instead of feeling like the story was a reward obtained by doing puzzles, because they were so disconnected from each other, they felt like some kind of cruel joke, a big wall saying, uh, uh, you want the story? Then solve this. It not only made the game not reflective at all, it made it not fun and not rewarding. And the gameplay is not the only thing that wasn't rewarding. The ending was Weird. I didn't understand, you see? Shady part of me is about a girl scared of light, and about how her own shadow gained conscience and wanted to escape the place where they were at. At the beginning, the shadow depended on the girl for it, and that made the girl happy. And that felt wrong, because the girl needed help. She didn't want to escape, she wanted to stay and not confront reality. But the shadow didn't care about that at all. As the game goes on, the shadow starts noticing how incapable the girl really is. The game narrator starts telling the shadow to be patient with her, 
and to start taking the initiative. That would have felt more right, but the game began centering on how the shadow was growing while trying to escape, while the girl didn't grow almost at all. At the end, the girl started confronting herself, showing herself to the world by doing this final show of sorts, but she actually never accepted light. She remained in the shadow till the very end. Not only that, but the shadow began taking over the girl's purpose and gameplay, possessing a puppet to go through the light areas the girl couldn't travel through. So why is the shadow the only one whose grow is reflected on the gameplay? At the end, it wasn't the girl who went to the light. The light just trapped her. And in the final scene, we just can see her right where she started, alone next to a swing. I'm sure the ending has to have another meaning behind what I read, but the truth is, to me, it was just unrewarding. Because at the end of the day, the shadow is just that. It's that little girl's shadows. And while we saw the girl and the shadow become one at the end, we didn't see the actual growing the girl, which is the one we should care about, not the shadow. So, in the end, the main problem of shady part of me was that. It was unrewarding. I don't even understand completely the meaning behind the end or behind the game, I'd say. Which is why I can't say it's a bad game. Moreover, the soundtrack, the art, the way of delivering a message, it was all amazing and artistically pleasing. It's just that, as a game, it won't do. For me, at least, Shady Part of Me isn't a bad game. But it isn't a good one either. It is a really missing piece of media though, and I hope a lot of people give the game a chance and that they understand what I couldn't. Hey, Nico here. Uh, thanks for watching the video to, for getting to the end. And I want to give a special thanks to Frey Polyphony, a friend of mine who helped me correct the script for this video, and to Satellitosa who drew all the little cute drawings you have seen on this video and obviously the character you are seeing right now. So thanks to both of you and thanks to all of you who are watching and who will share this video, I hope so. And yeah, it took me a lot but it's finally here. Welcome to the channel, I guess. Bye bye.